Mexico City. Enormous, yet charming. Hectic, and peaceful. Gritty, yet colorful. Both rich and poor. It is the largest city in North America with a metropolitan area of over 21 million. Once the capital of the Aztecs, a city where engineering, architecture, technology, and art flourished at the same time that Europe remained in the Dark Ages, it became the first stop in the New World and now reflects that blend of indigenous and Spanish culture at every turn. Join me as I spend seven days exploring this exciting metropolis. Hi, I'm Alfie. In 2020, the pandemic struck, my father died suddenly, and my six-year relationship came to an end. I fell into a severe depression and decided I needed a change in order to heal and find some joy in life again. So I quit my teaching job, packed my bags, and left small town New Jersey to travel south of the border, practice my Spanish, and start this travel vlog. I'll share all my adventures, travel tips, and hopefully inspire you to visit these places as well. This is Gringo Interrupted. Okay, day four in Mexico City. We are heading to the south part of the city, Coyoacan, which is Frida Kahlo's neighborhood and Diego Rivera. I'm having a rough morning. I am standing here with a bag of laundry. There are like 20 laundromats right around my Airbnb and they're all closed. It's about five of 10 in the morning. Uh, I guess nothing opens very early here. So I'm gonna give it till 10. And if they don't open, I am going to have to go back and bring my laundry back to my Airbnb. And I seem to have lost one of my tripods. Winning! Luckily, I made a friend while I was waiting. Hello. Hello there. Hello. You're a cutie. You're a cutie. Man, look at these ears. Look at those ears. They opened right at 10. I'll have clean laundry in three days. The fastest way to get down to Coyoacan is to take the Metro number three line towards Universidad. For this tour, make sure to get off at the Viveros Derechos Humanos stop, not the Coyoacan stop. Walk south on Avenida Universidad. The park should be on your left. At Perez, Venezuela, cross to the other side of the street. You'll see this fountain at Calle Rio, or River Street. Walk down and then make a left on Parras. On these cobblestone streets, you'll start to notice the colonial style architecture. We're now in one of the oldest parts of the city. Make a left on Salvador Novo and then another left on Francisco Sosa. Although Coyoacan is a large borough, this part retains its small town charm with its original layout, small streets, and colonial architecture such as Casa Alvarado. Now, the Museum of Sound, this building, like many others on this street, showcase ajaracas, bar-relief patterns that were popular in colonial times. I hadn't had breakfast yet, so I stopped at this place. And I'm glad I did because it had a really pretty courtyard and a place where I could sit and think about the really cool history of this neighborhood. You see, before the arrival of the Spanish, Coyoacan was a Tepenec village under Aztec rule. Not big fans of their rulers, 
They let Hernán Cortés, the infamous Spanish conquistador, base himself here and even helped him with his plan to take over Tenochtitlan, the nearby Aztec capital. Cortés and his buddies would soon call Coyoacán home, eventually ruling over the Tepanecs as well as the Aztecs. Continue down Francisco Sosa, taking in the colonial atmosphere. Be sure to look up and notice the religious niches atop so many buildings. Also notice the ingenious method of adding broken glass to the house to deter thieves. Slowly stroll down the street, admiring the colorful homes, the hundreds year old trees, and the charm of the neighborhood. The street is perfect for getting some great pics. You'll stumble upon the picturesque Parque Santa Catarina, containing the historic church of the same name. Dating back to the 16th century, although altered over time, the Spanish built this church for the indigenous to learn about Christianity and pray before being baptized. The colorful decorations are called papel picado, a Mexican tradition of paper cutouts depicting a specific holiday or celebration. Today, you see them mostly made out of plastic. Continuing down the street, we are now entering the center of Coyoacan. Coyoacan means land of the coyote in Nahuatl, the language of the Aztecs. We get the word coyote from them.
it's the first real cloudy day since I've been here. I think it's gonna rain pretty soon, which is gonna put a damper on my recording. But we're going to head across the street into this plaza and then to the Frida Kahlo house. Hopefully it doesn't start pouring. This fucking bus will not move so I can get a shot of the church. But at least it has a picture of Maluma on it, who is a famous Colombian singer you may know of. And he's hot. The main church of Coyoacan, San Juan Bautista, was built by the Franciscan Order in 1592. The church's interior is one of my favorites in Mexico, with its painted scenes covering the vaulted ceiling. Next to the church is Jardín Hidalgo, the main plaza of Coyoacán. Hey, if you learned something, I made you laugh, or you just feel bad for me, please hit that subscribe button. On the north side of the plaza is the House of Cortés. Although this building dates back only to the 18th century, originally the conquistador Hernán Cortés set up the seat of the first government of New Spain here. Walk north on Ignacio Allende to the Frida Kahlo Museum. rain yet. You can't miss Frida Kahlo's big blue house on Londres Street. You should buy time tickets online in advance and plan your day in Coyoacan around your entrance time. Probably the most famous Mexican artist of the 20th century, Frida Kahlo's work is recognized worldwide. The museum showcases her home and includes some of her early works and personal possessions. While you won't find her most famous paintings here, the museum is worthwhile if you are a fan. You'll also find some of the early works of her husband, famous Mexican artist Diego Rivera, who also lived in this home for a short time with her. Frida was badly injured in a near-fatal bus accident, leaving her in tremendous pain throughout her life and unable to bear children. 
On the left side of the political scale, Frida befriended Russian revolutionary Leon Trotsky, who was assassinated nearby. Time for lunch. Head back down Ignacio Allende to the Mercado Coyoacan. This colorful market, like so many in Mexico, sells everything you can imagine and is bursting with energy. I'm here for the famous Tostadas Coyoacan, a popular place for tostadas, fried tortillas covered with your choice of topping. I ordered one with crab meat, one with chicken in mole, and one ground beef and potato. mole. Si. I got it. These are so fucking good. Head across the street to Cafe El Jarocho, a Coyoacan staple here since 1953. I got Cafe de Olla. And I needed it. Continue down Ignacio Allende to Higuera Street. On the left, you'll pass by Cantina La Guadalupana, once a hangout spot for Frida and Diego. On the right, you'll pass this colonial home that bears no historical marker, but is historically significant. Hernan Cortez built this home for La Malinche, the indigenous woman he used as a translator and lover and who bore him a son. That son, considered by some to be the first mestizo, a person of mixed indigenous and European blood. Cortez, La Malinche, and their son are depicted in this mural by Diego Rivera. Notice the color of his eyes. La Malinche is a controversial figure in Mexican history. Without her help, Cortez would most likely not have succeeded in conquering the Aztecs. Some view her as a traitor, others as the mother of the Mexican race. Today, this is a private home. Right across the street, in what was once the garden of La Malinche's house, is the Plaza de la Conchita. Here, Cortez built 
La Capilla de la Conchita. Dedicated in 1525, although altered over time, what you're looking at is probably the very first church built in Mexico. In 2013, the ruins of a Toltec altar were discovered underneath, along with the remains of some 150 people. The Toltecs were far gone by some 900 years when Cortez arrived. You could finish your day in Coyoacan here and Uber back to where you're going or take the metro back. Or you could walk 20 minutes to the Cineteca Nacional, which is a beautiful movie theater, which I am actually about to walk to because I have a date. So yeah, I met somebody uh, on an app and uh, we hung out a little bit already and he's gonna meet me down here. I'm gonna catch a movie there and I'm gonna see this place that I read about, which I heard is a beautiful movie theater. So I'm gonna take you there now. Showing mostly artsy films, the Cineteca Nacional is probably the coolest movie theater I've ever seen. Tickets are 60 pesos, which is about $3. All seats are assigned, and because it's run by the government, there are no previews. Perfect timing, I just felt a raindrop. <laughs> Be sure to check out my next video, Day 5, when I take a day trip to visit the pre-Hispanic ruins of Teotihuacan and have lunch in a cave.